tires. Um, again, a awkward or inappropriate situation. We also have drawings with build instructions, and then very common is when you see the shop traveler serve also as the device history record. I realize that's very common, but that is that is actually a multifunction document. It's, there are other ways to do that. So we've talked about what happens a supplier receives a drawing, and that's fine. They're going to build a part, but now they have a list of on the drawing of all the alternate suppliers. This is not fair to either one of them. It's it's not appropriate. So there's probably a better place for that information. So just like in in um, in lean manufacturing, we have process delays. In lean documents, we have document delays. And the production of documents is just as important because a manufacturing plant can be delayed by waiting on material, waiting on product, waiting on people. But it can also be delayed by waiting on the right version of a document. And it doesn't matter what the reason for the delay is. It, a delay is a delay. Um, so what ends up happening with the traditional approach, approaches, we end up with this, this crazy web of cross-references where all the documents for a product family are pointing to each other because there isn't any, any unifying uh, place for, for this information. And maintaining those cross-references becomes a, a full-time function in itself. So if we look at what we've talked about, we arrive at a proposed theory of lean documents and that theory basically says that both the complexity of the document system and the number of documents in that system is really driven by the number of functions per document. Uh, and think about that. If, if, if by creating these multiple functions, we're having to create different combinations of them. So it becomes a geometric or even an exponential explosion, exponential explosion of the number of, of documents. So if we go back to lean principles, lean principles teach us we want to eliminate waste. So we have the, the seven wastes, and we if we can eliminate those, then we focus on what's called value added. So making the, tra the transition from lean documents, from lean manufacturing to lean documents, we would look at how to reduce document handling time document work in process, excess work on the documents, waiting for documents, too many documents being handled, the processing of the ECOs themselves, and then and then we have to deal with defective documents that have errors and omissions. So our goal with lean documents is to drive away these forms of waste while of course being compliant. We cannot we're not here to go out of compliance. We but errors and waste and duplication are more likely to lead us to non-compliance, non-conformances. So if we if we look at the, the key principles of lean, of lean documents, we would like a single function document written by an expert in that function, a subject matter expert. We want the exact yet complete information that the user needs at the time. We want to avoid unnecessary cross-references, and that brings us to what we're going to talk about. The design his device master record, the design history file, that's what it's there for. It's there to tell you where these documents are located. We want to avoid unnecessary duplicate information. Um, smart numbers, we're going to talk about a little bit later, but those are, we see them everywhere. Everybody assumes that they're necessary. They're actually a potential source of error, and they create a lot more problems than they're worth. And in general, just like that car, that owner's manual on the map of New Hampshire, we want to keep the product information separate from the process information. For example, a product, the same product may be built in Minnesota and in France. We want to end up with the same product, but by necessity, the two locations are going to have some things that have to be different, local standards, local language, there, there's other things. So. The process information, there's good reason why these should be, wherever possible, should be kept separate from the product. So lean documents is really getting back to basics. It's looking at the original intent of each of these documents and getting rid of anything that isn't part of that intent. So if we look at principles of how do you, when do you consolidate various documents? Well, 
if you have many documents pointing to each other and repeating the same information, and the documents cannot be, no, none of them can be used by themselves, that's a sign that the documents can be compiled together, especially when, when you have the same expert that wrote these documents. On the Conversely, if the document has too many sections, it's difficult to follow each section, was a totally different topic, and it's very complex, that, that may be a sign it's time to break up that document. So now let's talk about lean, lean number systems and schemes. Um, the, the use of non-lean numbers, what we, we used to call smart numbers, um, we have things like WI for work instruction, QA for quality assurance, 153 may be the room where the, that's kept in, and then sometimes we spell out the word O-B-E-N. I, I don't know why we don't spell out furnace, but um, we create all these things, and this, this doesn't make things smarter. Each one of those intelligent, so-called intelligent numbers is a different log that someone has to maintain. In a lean system, we don't want duplicate logs. We want one log, and we have examples of lean documents. Now, the, the only concession I make here is the, the, the numbers that begin with a 1, those are documents. The ones that begin with a 9, those are actual stockable parts. Documents and parts are very different things. Um, most of these numbering schemes are a holdover from pre-computer paper filing systems. We now have the ability, the computer, those should be actually data fields, search fields. But for some reason, we keep insisting on putting the intelligence in the number itself. Um, we can have the database field through the sorting. There's really no need for these smart numbering schemes, and especially for all these logs that, that someone has to make, each one of them has to be maintained by, by, by a person or, or a computer system. Um, so the idea of lean document numbers is you simply identify the entity as a document. Um, the only significance is one means document. The, however, the computer doesn't need any help in finding the particular document you're looking for. So you have the document number, 1001, and then you have the description. But you can find it by using search fields. If you happen to have the unique identifier, of course, you'll bring up the unique record, and that makes things much faster and error-free. Um, if we look, remember that web of cross-references, there is an alternative to that tangled web. On the right-hand side, you see how the different phases of design control were applied, and those ended up culminated in the design history file. At the time of design transfer, we created a device master record, and we can see that we have product and process information neatly kept apart, and from each one of those emanates the various types of documents that support both the product and the process. So there's a way to link these together without every document pointing to every other document. So right off the bat, we, we, avoid, we avoid that tangled web. So let, let's talk about the design history file. The design history file is there to demonstrate that the design was developed in accordance to an approved plan. So one of the keys, now many companies have keep all these documents in huge binders, like an encyclopedia. So that's a case of containing the design history file, but the FDA, the regulation allows to reference those records. So the design history file could be a couple of sheets of paper that simply list where you can find the other documents. So it is therefore a central file, and since it is a design history file, one logical aspect may be to maintain the revision history of these documents that are referenced there. Um, if we were to have a lean design history file, again, we want a single function, and that function is to reference the records that compile that family of products, as opposed to containing all of these records, which implies multiple functions. So a single a, set, a single document that lists everything, that's a single function. A, a whole encyclopedia of binders with everything thrown in there would be non-lean, would be multiple functions. 
um, we want to organize the documents according to the design phase so that it, you have the evidence of, of the design history. And since the design history file lists all these documents, um, the only it is the only cross reference that you need because you have one document that whose purpose is to tell you what all the documents are that belong to that design. So all of these other documents, instead of pointing to each other, they can simply say they point to their master. They say, "I am part of this design history file. Go look at that." You pull up the design history file, and it tells you everything else. So there is a, a much leaner way to do this. Now, the device documents that are listed in the in the quality system regulation. Let's look at these. They're kind of interesting. The design history file points to the past. How is it that that design was arrived at? The device master record is a transaction of when you had the design transfer. So it's the present, or it shows the record of those documents having been transferred in the form of a device master record, which shows how to build the part. And then once you build the part, you have a record of, of how that was built. You have evidence that it was built. So if you think about it, okay, this is how I designed it, this is how I built it. Are they really different functions? We're talking about the same family. We're talking about the same set of documents just presented at different points in time. So will they end up repeating the same information? And the answer is yes, they will, of course. Can they be one and the same? Well, the answer to that is yes, they can, if they are organized in a proper manner. So if we look at a, a lean design history file, um, 